On this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to make an easy jellyfish pendant. To make this week's project, you only need a handful of items. I've got myself a piece of wood here. This is some camphor laurel. I've got some pigments to color the wood. Black alcohol ink to tint the resin. And the resin I'm using is Artcast Slow Set. I've got a clasp for the top of the pendant. And of course, the jellyfish. I've also got myself a little mushroom here too. I'll leave a link to all these items in the description. The wood I just got from a local hardware store. You can use any piece of wood you like. I find if you go down the molding section, you get nice thin pieces like this. So the first thing I need to do is take my handsaw. I'm going to make two relief cuts in the timber. That way we can snap it in half and get our terrain look. Cut down about two millimeters each side. To snap the timber in half, I'm just gonna put it in my vise. Depending on what timber you get, it can take quite a bit of force to snap it. Now that we've got our timber cut to size, the next thing we need to do is put on our pigment. Now I like to do that over a black base. Now because our terrain is quite tricky, I'm just going to spray it on with a rattle can. Now the timber's dry, it's time to add some colour. I'm going to mix my pigments with some UV resin, and then I'm just going to brush it on. UV resin, just go stick it out in the sun for about 15 minutes. Now it's time to pour our base layer. Because the jellyfish is white, to make it stand out I'm going to do a black base and I'm just going to use clear packing tape as the mould. You can have the timber as close or as far apart as you want. It all depends on how much resin you want in between. Now that we've got the mould all sorted, it's time to pour the base. Even though I'm confident this won't leak, I'm still going to put it on a silicon mat. The resin I'm using is a casting epoxy resin, and this is mixed at a ratio of 3 to 1. Now I'm going to leave this overnight to cure, and we'll check on it tomorrow. Now it's time to add the jellyfish, but before I do that, I'm just going to trim away a bit of this tape, just so I've got some easier access. Now with my jellyfish and mushroom, I've gone ahead and painted the top of the mushroom red, just so it stands out a little bit, and with the jellyfish, I've coated it in some blue glowing pigment. Now all you need to do is find out what position suits you best, and then glue it down, and I'm going to do that with some UV resin. Now they're all locked in place, we can do the final pour. Once again we'll just leave this to cure and we'll check it tomorrow. Now that our blanks all nice and hard, the next step is to shape it up. Now you're only limited by your imagination, so just think of a design you really like and draw it on. I decided to go with a teardrop look, 
Now you'll notice that I did put my jellyfish off to one side. That's because I knew this blank was going to be wide enough so that I could cut this piece off and get another pendant. Now before we start shaping, I'm just going to go cut off all the excess wood. I'm going to give this nice off cut to Nicole so she can make a pendant. If you want to see how that turns out, go follow her on Instagram. I'll leave her link in the description. To get my main shape, I'm just going to get my belt sander here and turn it upside down and put it in the vise. If you don't have a belt sander but you do have an orbital sander, you can do exactly the same thing. Now that we've got our rough shape, we can start fine tuning it. You'll notice I didn't go down all the way here on the side. That's because I'm going to dome the front and I didn't want to take too much out of the middle. Now that we've got our final shape and we're happy with it, it's time to get rid of these scratches and start polishing it up. The first step in polishing is more sanding. Now I'm going to start off with 400 grit sandpaper, then I'm going to move to 6, 8 and 1200. Now I'm going to start off dry sanding and then move to wet sanding and that helps unclog the sandpaper. Now that I've finished sanding with the 4 and 600, I'm going to move on to wet sanding for the 8 and the 1200. Now the key to sanding is don't move on to your next grit until you've removed all the scratches from your previous grit. Now that I've finished sanding, it's time to buff. And for that, I'm going to use some Yorkshire grit. This is a microfine abrasive. Now if you can't get some of this, you can use car polish and I'm going to apply it with this microfiber cloth. It's now time to put the clasp on. All you need to do is mark where these pins line up and drill a hole. Before I show you this awesome pendant, there's one thing I want to mention. I made this video with minimal tools with the intention that you guys could make this project with the whole family. Whether it be your grandma, your granddad, your brother, your sister, or even your mum and dad. So if you think this is a project they'd be interested in, please share this video with them and then once you've made one, send me a photo. I'd love to see it. So now it's time to check it out and wait till you see it glow in the dark. It looks amazing. How good did the glow look? I knew you wouldn't be disappointed. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. Well, that's all for this week's episode. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.